let's being with something that we are familiar with. You see a smooth curve, like those you might have studied in calculus, predictable, with a clear direction. In classical calculus, we can easily find the slope of a smooth curve and predict its behavior. Look how the tangent slides gently along the parabola. But in finance, things aren't so tidy. On the right, observe the jagged path, full of ups and downs, much like a stock price chart. This randomness is at the heart of financial markets, driven by countless factors, trades, news, human emotions. In finance, we can't predict the future with certainty. The tangent line, which represents the rate of change, jumps erratically along the jagged path. This unpredictability is why we need new tools like stochastic calculus. Meet the Wiener process, also known as Brownian motion. It's the backbone of stochastic modeling in finance. In finance, we use this to model the random component of asset prices. Each tiny step is unpredictable, but over time, patterns emerge. Notice how the path is continuous but nowhere differentiable, it's rough at every scale, much like the stock market itself. In finance, we use the Wiener process to model the unpredictable part of stock price movements. It captures the idea that prices are constantly being pushed around by random market forces. In classical calculus, we love smooth functions. We can find tangents, calculate derivatives, and predict future values. Here's a smooth curve, like we saw earlier. Let's zoom in a bit. Zooming into the smooth curve, it starts to look almost straight, with a clear slope we can calculate. Even closer, the smooth curve is practically a line, perfect for classical calculus. But compare that to this Wiener process path, which models stock price randomness. Let's see what happens when we zoom in. Keep an eye on ticks on the axis. But when we zoom into the Wiener process, it's still jagged. No smooth slope here. The jaggedness persists at every level due to the dw term being scaled by the square root of dt. The dt term is infinitesimal, but the square root of dt is not. The dw persists at all time scales and keeps fueling the randomness. Let's zoom in a bit more to nail this point home. To build our new calculus, we start with a familiar tool, the Taylor expansion. Here are several Wiener process paths, modeling random stock price movements. Now, let's apply a function, say w squared, to these paths. In deterministic calculus, we'd approximate this with a Taylor expansion, ignoring higher order terms to 2 times w. But in the stochastic world, those higher order terms don't vanish, they accumulate due to randomness. The average of w squared, the white line, trends upward. Let's plot the theoretical average of all these paths. As the number of simulated paths increase the average or w squared would eventually converge to this theoretical average. See that extra term emerging? That's the key to Ito's lemma, accounting for the impact of volatility aka randomness in a way classical calculus misses. Imagine a function f of s equals s squared. If s is 0, its value is 0, and the tangent suggests small changes in s keep it near 0. In a world without randomness, if s stays at 0, f of s stays at 0 too. Simple enough. But in finance, s is random, like a Wiener process. Watch how it wiggles, and see what happens to f of s. Now, with many paths, notice something surprising, the average of f of s trends upward, 
even though S averages around zero. Why this drift? In classical calculus, we use the first derivative. But randomness adds this extra term, half times the second derivative times ds squared. For s squared, the second derivative is 2, and ds squared grows with time, pushing the average up. That's the magic of Ito's lemma. Now, let's see Ito's lemma in action. This red line is a stock price, jiggling randomly due to a Wiener process. The blue line is an option price tied to that stock, also volatile because it depends on S. But by holding just the right amount of stock, we hedge the option, creating a stable portfolio shown in green. The right amount of stock is the first order term coming from Ito's lemma equation also known as delta. This is the magic of Black Scholes, using Ito's lemma, we turn uncertainty into a predictable return. To deepen our intuition, let's step back to a discrete setting. This is a random walk, approximating a Wiener process with tiny steps. Now, we square it. Each step contributes a small squared term. Across many paths, the average of these squared terms builds up over time. In this discrete model, the squared steps contribute consistently, becoming the extra term in Edo's lemma as steps get smaller. It's like finding order in randomness. So, what have we learned? Here's Edo's lemma, the cornerstone of stochastic calculus, allowing us to handle functions of random processes. In finance, it's indispensable for pricing derivatives, managing risk, and making sense of market dynamics. By embracing randomness, we've unlocked a toolkit for navigating the financial world. In markets, uncertainty isn't just noise, it's opportunity.